Hello YouTube, this is Michael. Um, I'm doing a little update on my vegetable garden. Um, it's going to be a, a quick video, but I want to actually do an update on this cucumber. And this is a kind of a personal update. Um, because I've the last time I, I, I made a video, these two cucumber plants were very, very small. They were all about the size of the one right there. And now they're just really climbing on that trellis. And in a matter of just three days, I noticed a little cucumber right here. My camera might not pick it up, but you can see the end of that one. There's also one right here. Everything's looking pretty well. I just sprayed some neem oil on it about a week ago, and uh, it seems like all the holes have cleared up in the in the leaves. There was some some type of mites. I don't know if it was like a cucumber beetle of some sort, but it was on there and it was kind of making some holes on the leaves. But uh, now, like like this leaf right here, you can you can tell like, there's like some holes and it looks kind of like dead that was one of the leaves but since I sprayed the neem oil on there the holes have kind of like cleared up and it's been green so that's looking very very good and my next thing I want to show you guys is how well this crookneck squash is done in the ground this this big squash was actually planted much later than this these ones right here on this side I actually just planted this right now I know it says bok choy but my bok choy didn't do very well in there because I got some type of little caterpillar worm that was eating it all up and the neem oil didn't do nothing for that caterpillar it continued just to eat all the leaves off the bok choy so I actually had to move the bok choy and these little little things which I don't know how well they're gonna do it's just really a trial and error so we'll see I mean a few of them have grown, but I don't know. No, I'm not putting them out in the sun completely because, like this one in particular, I put it out in the sun just as a trial and error. And look at it, it just kind of burnt. And you know, I know bok choy is a very a delicate plant, um, but I don't know it's that delicate because it's really not that hot right now. But anyways, this is trial and error. You know, this is this is my first year gardening, doing a vegetable garden, so now I'm enjoying it. And check out the crookneck squashes that I have grown on here. There's quite a bit of them. Let me just move this leaf, and you see that one right there? How cool does that look? Looking good, and I have a bunch of them actually in there. If I can turn it, uh, here's a, there's another one right there. So right here, the little baby ones coming out right there. So they're growing everywhere, and again. This little one, this was like in a five gallon bucket. And to let all you guys know that are watching this video, crookneck squashes, in my experience, do not grow well in buckets. They need their roots just to go everywhere in the ground so that it can just be like boom and just grow like crazy. As you can tell, look at the size of leaves of this one. I don't know that one. And actually, this was planted much earlier in a five gallon bucket. So is this one, as you can see, it's probably not going to do well because it's June and it's too hot, so it's probably going to die. But, uh, again, trial and error, um, just learning. Um, these and these two came out of this bucket where I have some holes in, in here, as you can tell. See all the holes I put in there? and. Uh, it was full of this soil right here, and I ended up just moving this one and put the bok choy in that. Um, and it's, the squash did not do very well in this bucket. So, and it was sitting over there. Um, you now, as a matter of fact, I actually have a crookneck squash in this bucket, as you can see. And you notice, look at the green of it. It's not, it's kind of an ugly off yellow green, as opposed to that beautiful squash over there that's just nice and full and you like my little 
homemade um, pet defense so that my dogs don't go in there and smash everything. And there's the crook neck. Um, and, and the reason why I know this is not doing too well is because, I mean, look at all the leaves. I mean, this is burnt and we got just one flower here and we, we got a, bu a bunch of crook neck flowers but no actual squash. So I think that's just really weird. And so obviously it doesn't grow well in buckets. Look how thin these leaf stalks are. But then over in the other part of the squash, these are so thick, you know, nice and thick. So again, um, for all the viewers that are watching this and that want to grow crookneck squash or any type of squash, um, plant them in the ground because they're going to do very well and if you put them in five gallon buckets or just buckets in general just beware that they tend not to grow well you know and same thing like with with sweet at least me personally with sweet banana peppers sweet banana pepper I trimmed these I took advice from Praxis very well known gardening channel I love his videos, really cool, gets into detail. Uh, he had a video quite a while back that uh, mentioned, um, you know, cutting your pepper plants for larger yields, and I did it, and this has turned out to be great. Um, so Praxis, thank you for that. These have actually grown, and they've done well. These, n not even in line to you guys, have grown within like four or five days. There was nothing on here. Um, it was just these little flowers and literally four, I think five days tops, bam, I got these. Uh, everything else, I pretty much um, harvested a bunch of uh, tomatoes and before I end this video I'll show you what I got, it's inside. So please excuse my messy camera skills, but tomato plants are doing well. There's still a bunch of better boys on there. Um, look at the yellow pear tomatoes. Look at this big old bundle of tomatoes there. It's going to be great. Yeah, they're they're doing really well. There's the beef steak. Beef steak and big beef together. Those are looking really good. Um, the jalapeno. And you know, sometimes, I know I said it doesn't get too hot here, but last week it was like a hundred and something degrees and look at I'm growing garlic. And that's just about three weeks worth. So, there's five garlic heads there, five garlic heads there, and five garlic cloves, I'm sorry, there. And I'm experimenting with a banana, that's a hot banana pepper in there. And again, I topped that. I cut it, and uh, it's doing well. And I've got a couple of um, golden Marconis right here. Golden Marconi bell peppers in the ground. And they're growing really well. Let me pull this weed out. So, uh, yeah, it's growing okay. There's my Virginia sweets that aren't doing very well. Um, I think I have some type of, uh, what do you call that, where the flowers just drop off. Um, I know it's not blossom end rot, but I, I forget, but, yeah, the flowers are falling off. As you can see, see this area? There's a bunch of flowers on here, and when I just barely touched them, they just fell off. So, I don't know if I'm overwatering it or underwatering it, I really don't know, but we'll see what happens. And we walk over this way really quick, and for a few seconds, when I walk into the house, and I'm going to show you what I got. I'm, I apologize for this, guys, but I should have done this earlier. Well, I should have made a video where I can actually harvest them and show you guys because I love watching videos like that but I'm sorry um, that this is what I got yesterday I got home from camping for a couple days and Brooke watered all my plants for me and look at all these banana peppers tomatoes beef steak better boy big beef yellow pear red pear uh, another better boy jalapeno Thanks a lot, guys, for viewing, and take it easy. Am Eunice 86. Bye.